Running a brokerage is hard work. So whether you're focused on building your own sales pipeline, hiring the best agents, leveling up your team's production, or protecting culture you've built, you're in the right place. Real estate brings the challenges, and we share the solution. Welcome to the show dedicated to broker entrepreneurs. Welcome to the Brokerpreneur Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Brokerpreneur Podcast. I'm Dr. Ben Spears, the Doctor of Flow. I'm here as usual with the big guy, Matt Vi. How you doing, Matt? Doing absolutely fantastic. Doing and fantastic. Excited. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm super excited. Oh, I'm going to spoil it. We have an amazing, <laughs> we have an amazing guest on today. Um, a repeat guest, Mr. Bob Berg, the author, keynote speaker, author of The Go Giver. He was actually on our 100th episode, so Absolutely. he's being so kind coming back and being on the show once again. How are you doing, Bob? Good, Doctor Ben. I'm Matt. Great to be back with you both. Absolutely. So guys, just in case you've been living under a rock forever, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you a little bit about, about Bob Berg. He, for over 30 years, has been showing entrepreneurs, leaders, sales professionals how to communicate their value and accelerate their referral business. He was most known for endless referrals there for a long time, but then wrote with John David Mann, The Go-Giver, which absolutely took off as number 10 um, on Inc. Magazine's list of most motivational books ever written, mm -hmm. which is spectacular. Probably. It's been translated into 30 different languages. And, and Bob, you're also an unapologetic animal fanatic. Is that correct? Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Bob, tell us a little bit about just how you got into sales. I began actually as a broadcaster and failed miserably. I just, I really wasn't very good at it. I could read the news, but that was about it. I was not a journalist. And so I like to say I graduated into sales. I basically took a sales job just to make some money because what else was I going to do at that point? And, and, but I had no, had no formal sales training or anything like that. And apparently neither did the company I was working for because they just sent me out there to, and said, go make some sales. <laughs> and, uh, so it was a struggle, right? I pretty much flailed around with a lot of action, but no results for a few months. And then one day I was in the uh, bookstore just looking for something. I didn't even know there was such a thing as books on sales. This is 40 years ago. So un unless you knew, you didn't know. It's not like today where it's they are prolific, right? But I did find two books, one by Zig Ziglar and the other by Tom Hopkins. And it just, it fired me up just to realize, wow, there's actually a methodology to this. Tom Hopkins book was called How to Master the Art of Selling. Wow. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and so... I, I got their books and I like to say I, I didn't read them. I devoured them and I would stay up as soon as I got home from work. I would start studying and highlighting and underlying and taking notes and practicing and into the wee hours of the morning. And within a few weeks, my sales really began to go through the roof. And what it said to me is if you have a methodology, yeah. then you can pretty much accomplish anything within reason. It's really, it's having a system for success. And I personally define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. The key being predictability. If it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired results of B, then you know that all you need to do is A and continue to do A and continue to do A, and you will get the desired results of B. So that was really how it began for me. And I started to love sales. But I think what I really enjoyed the most was learning that it's not just the how-to aspect, which of course is very important, but it's the it's the personal development aspect yeah. that's really the difference maker. And so I started getting all the, the, the Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People and Napoleon Hill's Thinking Grow Rich and the, the David Schwartz's The Magic of Thinking Big and uh, Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz and all the, all the books that are on all of our bookshelves, I'm sure. And, and, and I began to realize that success is really an inside job. It's what yeah. we put into our being. Now it manifests itself outwardly and we need to do the work to make that happen. Absolutely. But we need to get that correct information in there, both on an emotional level, knowledge level and so forth. And then we're in a position to go out there and be able to do the work and make things happen. Yeah, of course, perfectly articulated. 
<laughs> it's, not, it's not like it's the first time you've ever said that. <laughs> uh, talking about, of course, having a system is, uh, like you said, it's crucial, right? It's critical. And the system being value-based, which absolutely we all know exactly how important that is. Mm-hmm. But that value, you truly being able to offer that value does come from inside. It comes from you. If you're not investing in you, how are you going to be able to provide value to someone else? Somebody right. that has no worth can't offer, can't offer that worth, right? Somebody that doesn't have that value, understand that value, doesn't, isn't able to share that. And, and, so, and so I love that. And, and I credit so much of my understanding about that to you. I knew, wow. I, yeah. And you were the one that, that truly helped me understand not just how important it was because I knew how important it was, but how to articulate that and how investing in me to be able to give it to other people is what allows them is what allows them to feel fulfilled in their process. You are, you are the man, right? We know that. <laughs> we, we, we love you. We love you to death. We appreciate you, you being on here. So, so the go-giver, right? So let's, that's where, it, that's not really where it all started. Like Dr. Ben said for you, right? It started long before that, but the go-giver is really where a lot of that took off. Is that correct? Yeah. Is that oh yeah. It took the, the speaking career to a new level. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You probably had a ton of aha moments with, with that being with people and being able to help them out and having conversations with them. And you had a ton of chances to be able to speak in a lot of different places can you share with us just a couple of the stories of people walking up to you and them just basically saying, man, I get it now, right? Thank you so much for sharing that. I get it. Is there any of those that really stand out to you compared to other ones or? Well, John David Mann and I get quite a bit of those and we love sharing those stories with each other when we do, because those are always, you all know, as people who write and speak and teach, and there's no better compliment than to know that it made a difference for someone and they articulate that to you. I think the big, the there were kind of two big things. One is just when the book first came out, it was the our first, if you want to call them early adapter, early adopters, I guess would be the right term, mm-hmm. were the people who had already been doing these things, had mm-hmm. already been living their lives, conducting their business this way long before they ever heard of the book. Mm-hmm. And they would say they mainly by emails that, yeah, this is how I built my business. This is how I became top producer. This is how I built a team. This is how blah, 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 blah. But nobody believes me. And <laughs> remember, you know, we've all been brought up with this belief system that you've that yeah. it's dog eat dog. You've got to be horrible right. and step on people and rah, 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 right. And that's what people believe. So when these people would say that they did this through a focus on bringing immense value to others by actually placing the interest of their customers and clients first, that people just didn't believe them. So they would use the book as third party credibility. Yeah. We're basically telling them the same thing that the leaders had already been telling them. Okay. Then the second wave of adopters were the people who then had received the book from their mentors or people who they, their managers or their leaders and so forth and said, oh yeah, now I see why. A great story was, and this was soon after the book came out and this is, and the book came out, if you recall, during the 2000, the financial meltdown. Right. And a lot of businesses, especially entrepreneurial businesses that, that were, they were hurting. Right. We got one great email uh, from a guy. He was in the uh, greater Pittsburgh area. He was a roofer, you know, he repaired roofs and his business had just really gone down. Like all his colleagues and competitors that everybody took a hit and all of them, as he said, were now pulling back on the value they were offering, trying to get it, get as much money as they could for the least amount of value because, well, what else could you do? And he read the book that someone gave him and he said, oh, I've been doing this all wrong. I need to find a way to, to add more value, which doesn't mean it has um, to cost more money. That's okay? right. And so what he did, and I thought this was so brilliant of him, that he found a way to work out a system where he could help the homeowners get the money that the home insurers owed them and they could do it quick. They could do it painlessly. They could get the nice. most money that they were supposed to. So what he did is now he starts knocking on doors or making whatever he did to in the prospecting process. And he wasn't asking, do you want your roof repaired? He knew or he knew they wanted it repaired. It was just nobody felt they could afford it and take the chance. So he'd say, what I can do is I can help you to get your money back quickly as much as you're supposed to have and painlessly. 
that was the and his business just took I off. I bet. So those are the stories that that John and I both just love to hear. And I don't know if I ever would have thought of doing what he did. You know, right. that's the thing. So it's the principle he took right. and, and then applied it to his own business. Yeah, and no, I absolutely love that. And it makes perfect sense, right? You have to think outside of the box. But if you do it from a sense of, hey, I'm leading with value, I'm truly trying to help the customer, yeah. then no way your business doesn't absolutely explode. So our like we've talked before, our audience is filled with brokers and broker owners. And one of their big jobs is recruiting or attracting talent to their bro- to their brokerage. Sure. And so I'll keep this in the sales world, but a lot of these things really transfer over in a sense of there's sometimes a fear mindset when it comes to se- to sell- to selling. Same thing with recruiting. If you don't mind, talk to us a little bit about how a salesperson or a broker can overcome some of those fears. Yeah. So let's first talk just in the context of sales itself, because a, a lot of realtors, they love the idea of just really helping someone Absolutely. to accomplish the goal of selling a home or buying their perfect dream home or or where they're going to raise their family. This broker, this realtor knows that they're doing a great service by right. helping a person. Okay? Yeah. And so, but the but they don't want to think of themselves necessarily as selling. And so I think we've got to understand why this is, because when we understand why we're in a, then in a position to work within this and turn what could be a negative into a positive, because if you don't like sales, if you don't like selling, that's going to hurt you because you're in the business of right. you are selling. Uh, right. So there's a disconnect. So when people say, I don't like selling, it's not that they don't like selling. It's that they don't like what they think selling is absolutely so if if, because there's a big misperception about what selling is right many people think selling is trying to convince a person to buy something that they don't want or need that's not selling that's called being a con artist (laughs) <laughs> and since that is incongruent with most of the people who are, right, right. That's, yes. it's just not going to work. There's going to be disconnect. So the, the, and John, who's like, like the ultimate wordsmith, he had discovered this, the root, the old English root of the word sell was selan, which meant to give. So mm-hmm. we could say when you're selling, you're literally giving. Now, someone might say, wait a second, that's clever and everything. What are you really giving when you're selling? I suggest, and let's say you're doing a, a listing appointment, What and you're in front of that, you're in a selling situation, selling them on the idea of the listing, right? What are you selling? What are you giving? I suggest you're giving time, attention, counsel, education, absolutely, empathy, and most of all, the promise of extraordinary value. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when we look at selling as giving, and by the way, a lot of, and I, I know many your brokers know this, but a lot of former school teachers yep. make great realtors Absolutely. Lot, because they're educated. And so the people who have a heart for doing this are the best, but they need to understand that is selling. And then when they do understand that, then they can feel good about it. And when we look at when a, a broker is teaching their the new people they bring on, what is, and we talked earlier about being able to communicate value. What is value? Value is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. What is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, listing, what have you, that will bring, that will, that person feel so good about, okay, that, that they place such worth or value on that they will willingly exchange their money or let's say the listing fee for this. Hey, Dr. Ben here. I hope you're enjoying this episode. If sometimes you feel overloaded or alone when it comes to building your brokerage, I want you to know that we are here for you. There's so much support available to agents, but hardly any dedicated to brokers. I want to personally invite you to schedule a complimentary strategy call where Matt will help you build a three-step profitability plan that will immediately produce results. This is not a sales pitch. There's no obligation. Simply click the link in the description below. Now let's get back to the show. Okay. So we know that every realtor out there is going to communicate what value that they're going to help the person sell their home at the highest price possible and the less least time possible, the least aggravation. They're going to handle the, the advertising and the staging and the negotiating and the inspection and all that. And that's wonderful. And all those things are great in and of itself. Lots of value. 
providing definitely more in value than what that person's paying, okay, which is the the key. But if every realtor communicates right. that same thing, yeah. how does that separate you? And, and again, if you cannot, unless a, a prospective uh, client can differentiate between two or more realtors, it's always going to come down to who has the lowest Fee, right. right. And unless, of course, unless your name is last name is uh, Walmart or Amazon.com, trying to make low fee your unique selling proposition <laughs> is not a productive way to do business, right? It's right. It, it's not fulfilling, it's not profitable, and it's not sustainable. So rather than then focus on that. What we want to do is be able to communicate the kind of value that we're really, that distinguishes us from other realtors. Now, the question is, okay, how do you do that when we're basically talking about a commodity? Because there's really nothing that any one realtor can do that most of the others can't really. It's, it's pretty much. So the short answer is you've got to be that additional value. That's right. You are the additional value. And you know what? They're buying you before they're buying the company. And before they were right. So, so how do you do that? The good news is this. There are dozens, if not hundreds of ways to communicate that additional value, but they come down, they tend to come down to five, what John and I call elements of value. And those elements of value are excellence, consistency, attention, empathy, and appreciation. And to the degree that you can communicate one or more, hopefully all five of those okay. elements of value at every touch point from the time you first meet them, whether it's an incoming call, a, whether it's a, a referral, whether it's a, a open house, however you happen to meet that person from that initial introduction to the follow-up, follow-through, the relationship building process, ultimately the sale of the referral process, to the degree that you can communicate those five elements of value at every touch point, that's the degree that you take both your competition and fee out of the issue, out of the picture. Yeah, could could not agree more. Absolutely. Again, perfectly articulated. It's like you said this before. <laughs> <laughs> you took a you dissected really quick what selling is. And I love that you I love that you did that. Okay. And and the reason why is because I think a lot of people believe that selling is this binary definition. We talk a lot about how important vocabulary is in your conversations with, with people. People think that selling is exactly this one thing. Instead of, and instead of just taking a step back and saying, you don't have to look at the Webster's Dictionary and see what it says for selling. Because it is an interaction between what you're offering to what somebody else is offering in exchange for the value that both people are willing to, to exchange, you can define selling the way that you want to define it. And that is going to be your differentiator. And what you said goes all the way back to what you started, uh, to what you started with basically is the, the better you make yourself, the higher your value is. And if you give of yourself with that person and your value is higher because you are focused on having a systematic way of doing things, all that allows you to do is make the value of what you're offering exponentially higher. For a, a real estate broker, as an example, that is trying to attract agents in the marketplace, if they can make themselves better, and if they quit looking at the word recruiting, as the Webster's Dictionary defines recruiting as this binary thing that is one way that you have to do it, if they can throw that out and say, okay, I want to attract the right type of agent. This is the person I'm going to be, and this is how I'm going to display it. I'm going to use these five elements that Bob uh, just talked about, and I'm going to make sure in all of my interactions, that's what I'm sharing with people. We all three know their recruiting becomes not just easier and more effective, but they enjoy it. Because what they're doing is they're sharing the value that they created themselves with other people because they did not look at that binary definition of what sales was or that yeah. binary definition of recruiting, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I agree with you totally. And and what happens is their reputation begins to really precede them and they become right. that, that broker of, of choice. In the follow-up to the go-giver, the follow-up parable, the go-giver leader, Aunt L, who was the, the mentor, said to Ben, who was the protege, she said, what you have to give you offer least of all through what you say. Now, what you say is very important, of course. What you say and how you say it, very important. But it's the it's probably the least important. More important, of course, is, is what you do. But most important is who you are. Right. And that's where character yep. 
comes into play. And character, the word character, speaking of words, <laughs> the, the word character comes from an old Greek word meaning scrape or scratch. Uh, it came to mean an engraved marking and eventually a defining quality. If one were to wax poetic, we could say that character is what happens when life etches or scratches itself right. onto your soul. Right. Uh, but not being particularly poetic, I just a, a defining quality yeah. and perhaps even more accurately, the sum total of all one's qualities is their defining quality or character. And it's interesting with people of character, high character that we know, they tend to stand for something and we all tend to know where they stand. Yeah. That doesn't mean they don't make mistakes. They're right. human. Of course they do. It doesn't mean they don't course correct. They absolutely do. It also doesn't mean they're not flexible on strategy. That's very important. They're flexible on strategy. But when it comes to those values-based decisions, they are absolutely immutable, immovable, and unchangeable. And that's why we trust them. Yep. And when you develop, you've heard me say for, for years, and it's been in every book I've ever written or been a part of, that, that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to, and we could add, and allow themselves to be led by those people they know and trust. And the biggest part of that is your character, and that speaks volumes. Yeah, complete, completely agree with that. I've, I've heard you use a, a word a couple times already in this interview, um, that word being empathy. And I've heard you also say that when it comes to sales, and we believe this for sure for when it comes to recruiting your real estate agents, it's the, I've heard you say it's the most important skill that a salesperson can have. And yeah. I, was, I was hoping that maybe you would share with us why, why you think that is. Yeah, I, I think people skills themselves are the differentiator. Having excellent people skills is the differentiator between the successful person and the stratospherically successful person. The reason why is because competence and technical skills, they're very, don't get me wrong, very important. You gotta know what we're doing. But a lot of people do, and a lot of people have them. So it's not that they're a dime a dozen, they're not, but there's a lot out there. There's a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of people who really know what they're doing. For you sure. can get to a certain point of success through talent and hard work alone. You absolutely can. But to go to that next level, you've got to be able to work with people in such a way that when people meet with you, they talk, they speak with you, they come away feeling better than they did beforehand. And what we call genuine influence is the ability to attain the results you want when working with others in such a way that the other person feels good about themselves, they feel good about the situation, and they feel good about you. That's important. And I would say that of all the people skills, empathy is the most important one. Now, the dictionary definition of empathy is simply the identification with or vicarious experiencing of another person's feelings, which sounds like just a fancy way of saying stepping step into the other person's shoes. And it would be, except for the fact that most of us have different sized feet. So we literally cannot step into the other person's shoes. We figuratively cannot step into their minds or step into their hearts. Why? Because we're not them. We don't have the same experience as they do. The chances are yeah. we don't. The good news is being able to effectively communicate empathy does not mean you necessarily understand how they feel. It means you understand they're feeling something and that this something is distressful to them and that you are there to help them work through it. Mm -hmm. And whether you are the realtor working with a first a uh, couple who they're first time buyers, and you can sense that they're not comfortable answering your questions mm -hmm. and they haven't told you why, but with empathy, you can dig a little deep and you can give an eye message and help them understand that they can be very comfortable asking you whatever they need or answering because this is what you do. And your goal is to help them get the home they want. And that this, you've heard it all and there's nothing they can ask you that, that is unacceptable <laughs> that, that or 
the broker who is in the recruiting process, but this person is maybe thinking of leaving another job, maybe another brokerage or whatever. And that person has some feelings about it that they may not necessarily come right out and say to the broker, but if you're really listening and you're empathetic, you can tell them something there and that you can help them and assure them whatever you need to assure them in order to make them feel comfortable. And that's such a difference maker. Yeah, Bob. We could sit here and talk to you all day long. You, you know that we want to make sure that we're super respectful of your time. And we're so grateful uh, that you are here. Now, you, you have a community. Of course, you have several best-selling books, The Go-Giver, the Go-Giver Sells More, Go-Giver for, for Leaders, you name it. And we're going to make sure in the description, all that stuff stays, all, that, all those things are there for them to click on, take a look at. But tell us, what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you, learn more about The Go-Giver? and connect with you. Yeah, they can go to Berg, B-U-R-G dot com. Pretty much everything's there, including a little pop-up-y thing that will say they can subscribe to my free daily impact email, which comes out Monday through Friday. And we also have, we have the Go-Giver Success Alliance community. And we have a, Kathy, my business partner, I, Kathy Tejano, we have a Go-Giver Beyond the Mastermind two-day event. It's two full days. We limit it to eight people. So it is very mm-hmm. right into yeah. them. And, and sometimes we have them where they're realtor specific, where realtors, the brokers, what have you can attend. And it's just very successful people all committed to helping each other over those couple of days. Love it. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Well, I'll make sure that all that gets in the description below. And uh, it's already sparking a bunch of really cool cool ideas for, for me as well. Bob, thank you so much for coming on the show and a second time. And we're super, super grateful to have you. Absolutely. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Dr. Ben. Appreciate you both. You guys are really two of the greatest. And I always enjoy speaking with you. I appreciate it. Guys, if you're listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, any of those platforms, make sure you hit that follow button. If you're watching this on YouTube, hello, make sure you hit that red subscribe button, that bell right beside it, get notified every time we drop a new episode. There's no better time than the present than to go to Brokerpreneur Podcast and check out all the cool things that we have there to help you grow your brokerage, no matter what stage of the business or phase of the business that you're in. Matt, we bring on amazing guests, just like Bob Bird, for one reason and one reason alone. Tell them why that is. We just want to be part of your win. See you guys. Thanks, guys.